Right, welcome back for this week's technical and today it's an unusual one. It should be pretty short and sweet. I don't think very many of you are going to have come across this, but some of you might. Before we get into it, if you haven't already subscribed, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. That means you get updates about new videos. It means you don't miss any technicals, vlogs, podcasts, whatever I end up putting out. Anyway, on with the technical. And today we are talking about something called epididymal harvesting of sperm, also called epididymal salvage. What is it and why am I talking about it? Well, it's one method of collecting semen for breeding purposes from a male animal that's died recently. Now in practice, that can be a really valuable male post castration it might be he's gone to the works, the abattoir, but we want to retain some breeding material out of him. It might be that he's a really elite member of a breed. It might be he's a member of a very rare breed or even a member of a very rare species. And it might be the case that he's got into a bad accident and he needs to be put down ASAP. And that's why I'm talking about it. One of my colleagues went to do this on a stallion recently. They seem to do more of it than we would do in farm medicine, probably because horses are even more creative than cattle and sheep are finding ways to die suddenly, but also because stallions are often worth a lot of money. This one in particular had broken his leg, but the owner wanted to retain some of his breeding potential. And so the method they employed to do this was this epididymal harvest, this epididymal salvage by another name. Before I get into any greater detail, I wanted to put a disclaimer in. I wouldn't want to write a check that some of the artificial breeding companies would struggle to cash. So first of all, there are no guarantees with this method whatsoever. It is a salvage job. If we get something at the other end, you're doing very well. It's also not suitable for male animals that have been sick beforehand. This is not an animal that's died after a prolonged or even sudden illness because as we've talked about before, illness and especially anything that causes a fever will severely compromise sperm quality. If the sperm are no good to start with, there's no point doing this epididymal harvest. And finally, animal welfare is absolutely priority number one. If the animal is in severe pain or distress, it needs to be euthanized as soon as possible. That must take precedent over any harvesting of semen or sperm. Now, with that disclaimer, out of the way, let me explain a bit more about the mechanics of the process. First of all, it's probably worth explaining what an epididymis is. I'll pull up a diagram here, but the epididymis is essentially the tube that carries the sperm from the testicle to further up the penis so it can get to where it needs to during ejaculation. It actually stores a lot of sperm that make its way up through there gradually, but it's not just a storage vessel. There are a lot of important processes that go on while the sperm travel up that tube. As that tube ascends and gets closer to the penis, it becomes the vas deferens. That is the tube you would cut a section out of during a vasectomy. And so hopefully you can see how that would make a male animal sterile. So the epididymis in summary is a transport vessel, but it does contain sperm, even if not fully mature, many of which will be viable and it's a rich source of them. Now the process on farm, or if it's a stallion on a racetrack, for example, is actually reasonably straightforward. A vet would come on, they would castrate the animal. If the animal isn't in excessive pain, it might be done while it's still alive. If it needs to be put down pronto, it will be put down and then castrated. Once those testicles with the epididymis attached have been removed, they are then packaged very carefully, normally wrapped in something like a towel or bubble wrap, and then put in a chilled container. So something like a cool box with a couple of ice packs in it. We want this to be chilled about four or five degrees, not frozen. And as you can imagine, the quicker those testicles get to somewhere they can be processed, the better. Ideally, it's within a couple of hours or even immediately, although in theory, you can get viable sperm up to 24 hours after those testicles have been removed. Looking at one example of an artificial breeding center in the UK, that's AB Europe, they want the testicles within six hours. And then once they get to the artificial breeding center, the vets and the technicians there will work their magic, do their very best to try and get some semen out of that epididymis and try and get some viable sperm to make some semen straws with. Now, who is this going to be relevant to if you're a farmer? It's going to be mainly for those of you with a very high value male. Now, now that might not just be a pound or dollar value, but it might be to do with his genetic diversity, especially in rare or minority breeds. Maybe it's just a bull 
or a Ram or a Billy that you really like and you think you could get some more use out of him. If you're a stud breeder whose bulls or rams might be valued in the tens and if not hundreds of thousands of pounds, I think this is a really valid option because I can bet at least some of you will have been in this position before. And it might not be in a nightmare disaster scenario. It could be that they have a long-term injury, say a back injury or just a real niggly lameness that hasn't responded to treatment and makes them unfit to travel to a semen collection center. Now, this could be your last ditch way of collecting some semen out of them to make some straws. There are probably things you would and should try before this, but like I say, if you've exhausted all of those options, this could yield something useful. This process is clearly very time sensitive. If it happens on a weekend, there's probably not much hope there, but just know that it is an option. What I would say is scope out your nearest artificial breeding center. First of all, ask them, are they happy to do this? If so, if it came to that, what would they need from you to make it work the best? You could even have an SOP, a standard operating protocol, printed out, laminated. Hopefully it will sit in a drawer for 10 years and never need to be used. But if it comes down to it, you're not having to panic ring the vet, panic ring the artificial breeding center. You've got that information ready to go. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Anyway, that's it for this one. I thought it was a pretty interesting way to salvage some silver lining out of a pretty bad situation. And it's certainly not one I was aware of before, so I can definitely see it being something I offer, even if we don't end up doing it in the future. By the way, I've put some references with a bit more information about epididymal harvest of semen in the video description. A lot of it refers to horses. They seem to do more of it than we do in farm medicine. As always, if you enjoyed that, click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it if you haven't already, leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I will see you next week.